Now we have rapid dap development, learning the basics of building. Our next teacher is a serial builder, uh, self-proclaimed every man in the Ethereum space. He is hyper-focused on smooth user, user experiences and seamless onboarding. You may know him for his work on the burner wallet on the Ethereum blockchain or for his bow ties. <laughs> Pleasure to introduce Austin Griffith. Thank you. Thanks. So uh, I guess we tore everything down here. Let me bring it back up. So I kind of have the curriculum written into a Medium article that I just published. So rapid DAP prototyping. So uh, you probably saw the uh, link. Hopefully you saw the link to bring down Clevis. And uh, I'll, ooh, there we go. Maybe make that bigger. Um, I think it's on my desktop. Yep, OK, so uh, if you have Clevis installed, you can probably ask it for the version, and it could bring something back to you. Um, this is the sort of orchestration side, compiles and deploys. And then there's Dapparatus, which is the front end side. It's the React component. So it, it basically takes the things that you deploy on the Clevis side and injects them into uh, the React side. Let me. Pull up a repo and we'll get into some code here. Ooh. This is kind of hard to do. <laughs> I probably won't be able to bomb through a bunch of stuff, but maybe I can cherry pick some code and we can get some stuff running. OK, so when you first start a project, you basically have uh, no smart contracts. Is that big enough? Maybe a little bit bigger? Is that big enough? Good, good. OK, cool. So you, you kind of have a React uh, component with a bunch of stuff commented out. And you kind of have Clevis over here ready to go. So uh, let's get our ganache running, which would be our local blockchain. And uh, come on now. There we go. So that's just going to emulate like an EVM uh, chain for us. It's going to be running on local host. Uh, what, what we'll try to do today is kind of uh, looking, looking at the ETH Berlin submissions, like DAOs, DeFi, NFTs, we're, we're all like very popular things. So maybe we'll just kind of like build something quickly that fits that a little bit. So let's see. So you probably uh, have, hopefully you have run something like Clevis, NPX Clevis init. And what that does is just bring in everything. And like I said earlier about building a, building a proof of concept, there's a lot of overhead here. This thing takes like five or 10 minutes to install, brings in way more than you need. But the point is you can quickly uh, just jam through stuff once, once you have Clevis there. Uh, eventually, if you're going to go to production with this, you probably want to carve things out. If you've ever looked at the code for the burner wallet, it's gross. <laughs> we use it at ETH Denver, and we, I had to get everything to work just right up to the moment, and uh, then kind of left it alone after that. Make sure if your Clevis doesn't work, you can set the alias up for Clevis. Uh, Clevis version we've run. OK, so rapid prototyping. Oh, yeah, let's get the DAP up. So on the React side, we can do another one of these windows and do an NPM start. And that's going to bring up a React server for us. And I'm going to pull that up also. But I'm going to do it in an incognito window to prove that you don't need like MetaMask or anything like that. Localhost 3000. OK, so she's all loading up. Let's see. Boy, that's hard to see. Yeah, good enough. OK, so uh, yep, navigate. If you, if you are using MetaMask, make sure you point your MetaMask to localhost. Uh, once this thing spins up, we will have that. Let me get the code over here so I can copy and paste some stuff. So I, I noticed that there's already a dude doing like remix here. So he's probably already kind of gone through like functions and payable functions and uh, like what it means to to respect the message dot sender we'll talk about it a little bit here but I won't go like dive into it perfectly I, I will kind of gloss over it more uh, than than really get into it and, and I'm happy to get into it if you know hit me up afterwards I, I have two different curriculums for this kind of stuff one is like the really line by line stuff and this is more of a we're just gonna kind of jam through stuff OK, so the first thing we're going to do is just send this guy some money. So here is our DAP. It's actually up and running. There's nothing to see right now, but we have an account. We have everything to, uh, ready to go. 
I'm going to kind of fly in blind here, but it's working. I'm gonna grab this account and I'm just gonna send this guy some money with, uh, on our local, uh, oh, I'm not saying, why, why did I pick such a weird name, right? Send, we're gonna send one from the zero account to this guy and we'll see this dude get, there we go, so now he has one ETH over there. Uh, we can do it again just to see that number increment. He's kind of, we're sending stuff in. So now, now we know we kind of have like this nice little dev loop where we're, we're sending transactions, our front end is respecting it, we're good to go, we've got this account. Uh, so let's go ahead and create uh, our first contract. And with Clevis, it's just Clevis create and then whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna call it a nifty DAO. So what I'm thinking is like we make this DAO that's like a, an NFT, like a non-fungible token and then we'll, we'll like vote in members and we'll vote in tokens and maybe mint some, and then like maybe let people buy them on a bonding curve, but uh, we'll, we'll see how, what time allows us to do here. So let's scroll through this. Okay, yeah, so let's just add one simple thing to the smart contract just to make sure our, our dev loop is, is ready to go here. So when we uh, do that Clevis create, it just gives us this nice scaffolding. I'm gonna paste that in and hit save. And then if I just do a Clevis compile, Nifty DAO, it's going to compile the contracts for us and uh, just might as well just kind of look at what happens there. It spits us out some bytecode. So when you send, uh, there's probably a lot of Bitcoin guys here, a lot of UTXO stuff. On, on Ethereum, it's like to and from. When you send a transaction, basically you have the to and the from, the value and the data and you sign that and that goes on chain and uh, you know it's mined into a block. Uh, with, with deploying a smart contract, basically you don't have a to address. You have an empty to address, but your data is all this stuff. And the miners basically respect that as, hey, this guy is deploying a smart contract. I'm gonna hold that now uh, you know, within the state of my machine and let them interact with it. And then we'll get an address back when we deploy it. So let's go ahead and deploy that. And we'll deploy it as our zero user uh, of our Thing, and then when we deploy it, we'll get like an address back and all of that stuff. So that's, that's the address of the contract on chain. Uh, let's go here. So let's see, yep, we deployed. Uh, we looked at the byte code. Now we have an address. Now I can even like hit that contract if I want. Let's see, Clevis. <laughs> I can say Clevis contract. What's a, a purpose, I think is the name of our variable and we're just querying the purpose, right? So, so writes to smart contracts are very expensive because everyone has to change state, but reads from contracts are very cheap. You can just kind of like, just query any local node and they'll send you the information. So this, this is technically a very cheap command to do, but if we were trying to set the state, that would be more expensive. Uh, okay, so finally, let's go ahead and publish that. So what publish does is take that ABI that was so the ABI is sort of like an API. It has all the different function calls and how that works. It's gonna take that ABI and it's gonna shove it into the, uh, the React and also uh, provide the address. So just basically telling our React app how to deal with that. And then if I come over here, we're gonna to have to edit the, uh, the app itself and we're gonna open it up to read. And luckily when you do an init, this stuff is all ready to go for you. You can just kind of uncomment it. So I'm gonna uncomment the transactions object. So Deparatus has a bunch of nice components that make things easier for you. This is the transactions object. We'll see it down in the bottom right. It's gonna track our transactions, but it's also gonna give us this nice interface for interacting. And then this is the contract loader. So it's just gonna look for things that Clevis has injected and if we reload now with that stuff there and I inspect, uh, ooh, slide this guy over. Oh man, it's tiny. Uh, so if I go to the console and we scroll down, we're gonna see that it's loading in our nifty DAO. It's gonna say contract, I can't see it from here. Let me, let me bring it over here. Actually, I bet I can make it bigger too. Oh yeah. So yeah, so here is this object here where it's saying, hey, your contracts are ready. It's just letting us know that in the front end, we have the contract, it's here. There's even a function called purpose that we could call on it. So we have everything we need now. Basically the, the next piece we wanna do here is just like tighten our dev loop and show that the, the whole goal here is that we can iterate quickly. So, so what is it going to take? Oh, wait, we need to put our purpose in there, don't we? Let's see. What we wanna do is display it in the front end, right? We wanna do a query against 
the uh, smart contract so we can see it in our front end. Okay, so what we'll do is once the contracts are loaded up, I'm gonna kind of cherry pick some code here. Once the contracts are loaded up, so we have our contract loader, it's like, oh, okay, contracts are ready. We're just gonna run a command here that sets the state. It's gonna grab the purpose from the smart contract. So we've got our React going to pull information from the smart contract, and now it's setting it into the state of React. And what we need to do is display it. And I'll grab that here. So we'll go down to where our UI is and we'll uncomment this stuff. And this is a bunch of UI with like events and buttons and it, it just tries to set you up with uh, kind of the things you might need, but I'm just gonna grab those and carve them out for now. It kind of just tries to set a little scaffolding for you to help you out as you're building your app so you can quickly get to it. Let's see if I did all my tags right here. We should hopefully see that, nope. What do I have here? I can't even see that. Something about the, oh, your contract. That's not gonna work. We need to say uh, nifty DAO, right? So you can see we just kind of access our contract uh, through just saying contracts.niftydao. There we go, so now we have like our string here. Uh, okay, so let's, let's just iterate on it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, okay. Let's, let's iterate on that a little bit. So it's all about a tight dev loop. So let's go back to our contract now. The, the thing that I'm, that I'm trying to like really, really uh, hammer home is that you wanna be building your smart contracts. I'm gonna add some exclamation points in here and then, it's, uh, and then we'll do a clevis test full. So we'll run through kind of everything we just did, but now it's basically going to compile that new contract with the exclamation points. It's gonna deploy that to our test chain. It's gonna publish those contracts into the front end and now we're kind of like iterating, right? Now we have our exclamation point. So we're, we're like changing our smart contract and we're seeing that change in our front end and we're, we can kind of work back and forth, right? We can add a function into our smart contract and put a button in our front end and kind of go back and forth. So let's, let's, uh, let's do that. Let's see what's, what's next in this write up here. Okay, fork and road, this is where I say, should we go the slow route and go line by line or go the fast route? I think we're gonna go kind of in between. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll go the fast route, but I have a feeling that we won't finish it because of the technical difficulties and that hard, it's hard for me to see here. But what we're gonna do is bring in Open Zeppelin. So if you've heard of Open Zeppelin, they, are, they have a bunch of contracts that are uh, well, they're well visible, right? Like a lot of people have seen them, a lot of people have used them. Tokens and token sales have gone through these. So we're gonna bring in some, some contracts that are already pre-built for us uh, because what we need is this ERC721 mintable metadata. What we want is to have a, uh, an NFT, a non-fungible token that uh, is all written for us and we don't have to do all that work. I have like written one from scratch and you can do it and it's not that hard, but you never know what you're gonna get wrong and this thing fits all the standards. So when I deploy this thing, someone from OpenSea or anywhere else that's building uh, other apps can just instantly tap into my API and, and since everything is extensible on, on the blockchain, uh, it's good to fit to some standards. So let's grab that code. Uh, let me see, let's see where we are. So I will also post the GitHub that has basically each step we do here as a commit and you can follow along with the commits. It looks like this, let me move it over here. So you can kind of just like see as I make changes and bring changes into the contract each, each commit. And I'm gonna be kind of copy and pasting on that and following along up here. So uh, we'll have to do a few things here. We're gonna bring in those two libraries. To our contract. So now that uh, we've imported Open Zeppelin, we can just go to our node modules and bring those in. And uh, since we are using this, we're gonna have to overload our constructor a little bit, basically. Since, since we're gonna be creating this ERC721 with metadata, we need to take in a name and a symbol, which means that we'll have some arguments. 
in our arguments file. So you'll, you'll notice when I created those contracts, it was basically these two files, arguments and dependencies, and then nifty.sol. So the dependencies, I, I like almost tried to fix last night, but <laughs> the, these, these are still a mess. Basically, uh, if you've used Truffle, it kind of brings it in for you automatically, and this is kind of my, my version of Truffle, but I still have to load my dependencies manually. And with something like Open Zeppelin, there's so many of them that it, you know, it takes me 10 minutes just to bring in all these dependencies, but you know, magically I'm just going to copy and paste those. So uh, by the time you get in this, to this and use this, this will be automatic. Basically, all, all I'm doing is putting in these paths and following all the paths manually, which a computer would be better at doing. So uh, there's my dependencies. We've loaded in the contract. Now I should be able to, let's see if this will compile and deploy. Nope. What am I missing? Uh, let's see, ERCs. Whoa. Oh, uh, something right here it needs to be is. There's is something here. So when you when you uh, set up your hierarchy of your contracts, you need to bring in. Got it. There we go. This is hard. It's like doing this with oven mitts on. Okay, here we go. Now that should compile. Uh, let's just do the full gamut. Okay, so uh, there we go. Now we should see that all these modules now compile in. Yep, it's happy. Okay, so technically we have a nifty. Now what we wanna do is build our DAO. So I'm gonna build like a very minimum, minimum, minimum DAO. <laughs> like, like I don't think this could even be considered a DAO, but uh, basically the, the components of a DAO will have members and the members will be able to vote in under other members. And then uh, those other members will then be able to do other things that, that once they reach the quorum, they'll be able to vote. But this is it right here. So you, you've got a list of members, you've got a count of the members, and that's what we use for the quorum. Uh, you've, you have votes, which is basically an address to a number, and then uh, which, which would be voting new people in, and then whether or not you've voted. So making sure they haven't voted before, uh, making sure they're not an, a member already if you're trying to bring someone in, uh, and then making sure you haven't voted for that person, making sure that you're a member, making sure you haven't voted before, then uh, setting it so you have voted, and then incrementing the votes, and then if we have enough votes, we add the member. So that's all the code right there. Let me bring that in. I'm just gonna copy and paste it so we don't, uh, in the sake of time here, So over to our contract, let's bring this in. I think I'm gonna do that. Ooh, did that work? It looks ugly. <laughs> it's so hard to run the menu looking at it. Okay, so yeah, so we're gonna have a member count and we're gonna add the deployer. So message.sender is the person who like did the, the transaction. So the person who deploys the contract will be the first member of our DAO and then uh, we'll use him to add other members. I think we may be missing one of those. That's my guess. Let's see. Yep, okay, so now that's gonna deploy that all out. So now that we've made the change on the contract where we can add a member in, we're gonna need to make that same, those same changes over on uh, the, the front end. So what we'll do is once the contract is loaded up, we're gonna do some old school programming techniques and we're gonna run a pulling function here. So we're gonna start pulling. And uh, let me write that in. And so the pulling is basically just every, every couple of seconds, we will reach out to our contract and ask it, you know, what's the member count? Who are the members? I'm gonna iterate through all the members, bad programming, and, and post them up into the state, and then we can kind of look at those in the state. So then.
we want to then parse through those members and set up a nice little display where we to show the address and, and probably the, like the ETH balance. And then we wanna have a nice little display that tells us how many members we have and let us add new members. Maybe like right in here. Okay, so here we go. We're saying our nifty DAO has this many members. We'll print out our members and then we'll set up like an input box and a button that lets us add new members. And so that transaction component we brought in a long time ago, it gives us this TX object. And this TX object lets us call transactions without having to wrestle around with the Web3 library. It kind of abstracts it away. It just says, hey, you know, you want to call the add member function with whatever this add member is that you have in this input box. I'm going to handle that for you. I do increase the gas, but that's a, an optional parameter. And then when you're done, just clear, clear the input box. So now we should have a DAP that lets us vote in members and displays the current members. So there we go. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and grab this guy's address and let's add him into the DAO. Now the very first user, since this guy is the owner, will have to be added in from the command line. But normally I'll probably do this like from a script, right? Like I'll deploy the contract, I'll set my MetaMask user or some cold user as the first member, and then I'll exit out of the DAO with my command line user so I don't have to like screw around on the CLI anymore. There we go, so hopefully we added that dude in. Okay, now the, the DAO has two members and if we were to add a third member, it, both of us would have to go through this add member process. I, I'm gonna save that just to kind of move on in the, but if, if we get to the end, we'll, we'll like kind of play around with some of these edge cases and kind of add a bunch of stuff. So yep, we brought in the members, we set the interval, uh, we did the display and we set up the UI. Again, we're just doing this back and forth where we're writing our contracts and we're writing our UI at the same time. And then we added in the member and we saw him show up and we could add in a third member, but we're gonna hustle here. So we've got our DAO sort of working, right? It's sort of a DAO, we sort of have, it's almost like a multi-sig with, and we could set up a numerator denominator so we don't have to have everybody's vote. There's a lot of little things we could do to just make our life easier, but the point is we're just rapidly prototyping this thing. It's kind of like a hackathon project, right? So now that what we need is, uh, we need to be able to vote stuff in. We need to use this DAO. So a non-fungible token is, is it's not like a uh, fungible, like an ERC-20 where I can send tokens around. You have a balance of 20, I have a balance of 30. We can exchange those back and forth and they're all sort of the same. With this, with an ERC-721, you have metadata and that metadata is unique. So each token will have a unique ID, but it also has this metadata, which uh, for some reason they set the standard to be a URL that goes out to some server. So basically you wanna kind of have this centralized, I'm sure there's like an endpoint or something, but in this case, we're just gonna have an image. So then we're gonna use our DAO to decide what images we can use. So uh, we want to be able to vote in URIs. So we want the, the DAO to be able to vote in on the URIs. So we're gonna bring in this code here. And if you take a look at it, you can see that the add token is very much like the add member. We're, we're making sure this person that's bringing this in is a member. We're making sure that they haven't uh, voted on this token yet. Then we set the fact that they have voted on this token. And then uh, we, we, this token price and token curve we'll get to later, that's the DeFi aspect, and thinly DeFi, DeFi maybe. But, but we'll, we'll get to that, just kind of forget about the token price and token curve, just focus on the fact that we're voting in a URI at this point. So let me bring this code in and paste it into the contract. And you can kind of inspect that, I think it's big enough. Is that big enough, Read, readable enough? Okay, so let's bring this code in. And then you can see down at the bottom there, once the token, if the token has enough to meet the quorum, which should be members, so hopefully I'm not bringing quorum in here because that's a later piece. Once you have the members, uh, enough votes from the members, we should just add the fact that this is voted in. And so we're kind of just keeping track of these strings, these URLs that are legal. And, and it'll make more sense in a little bit once it all kind of comes together. Okay, so let's see. At the end of add member, let's sneak down here and put in some more code. 
Okay, so now we're gonna have a mapping to token price and token curve. Again, let's ignore those. This is the code we kind of just went over. There's this add token function that allows the DAO to vote in new legal URLs. So what it does is it, you won't be able to make tokens of any URL. You actually want the DAO to control that. And you really don't want some human, say if there's a whole market involved here and these, these tokens are being bought and sold, you don't want like one human to be able to say like, oh yeah, there's a new one and here's the address. You want a governance layer there that a whole bunch of people with different stake in the game are, are going to vote on that. Let's just do a test full, see if it goes all the way to the other end. Oh, you know what, I think I'm gonna have to edit. There's this token URI, nope, that's the next step. Okay, so compiled, deployed. Now let's jump back over to the front end, right? So we've added this new, this new add token UI, so we're gonna need to track those tokens. So in our polling function, first, let's, uh, let's do some stuff here, let's see. Okay, so into our polling function, we will, uh, I think about right here, let's sneak in here. Okay, so we're just gonna uh, kind of set up these tokens. We're gonna, we're gonna get the token count. Again, bad programming practice. We're building a proof of concept here. Uh, we're gonna get the count of tokens. Let's see, what are we doing? We're getting, oh no, no, we're listening to events. Yeah, 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 so what we need to do is put an event object in here first. That's, to make this make sense, I should start with these events. Okay, so I'm gonna copy and paste a bunch of UI here and I'll explain it as we go. So right in here. Okay, so the key thing here is Dapparatus is bringing in this component called events, and it lets us watch for events. And if we see in that smart contract, once a new token is voted in, once we get this voted in, nope, that's not it. Uh, once we get this new token voted in, it's gonna trigger an event. And uh, if you're familiar with smart contracts, events are these really cheap ways to do things sort of to signal off chain. So other smart contracts can't listen to your events, but apps can. So it's a really cheap way to like send a message out without having the app having to come read from your storage. So uh, what we're gonna do is anytime a new token is added, we're just gonna signal to the front end that that, that, that token is there. And this nice component is just gonna keep these token events stored in our React state for us. So then back to that thing we were building up there, once, once we have those tokens in the state, we can just iterate through the events in the state and we can say, okay, there's a new URI that was voted in. So then we're gonna push this new URI, but we're also gonna query for the price and the curve and we'll get to that in a little bit. And we wanna tell it to set our state. And then we will set those to display. So now that we have a list of those tokens, we need to build React objects with them. <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> uh, we've got our members. Okay, so now let's bring in our tokens. Okay, so now we're gonna iterate through our tokens. You can see we've got some nice HTML here. We're gonna just display basically a picture with the token and the price and the curve, and we'll get to the price and the curve in a little bit. And then the UI that I pasted in below the event is basically gonna display those tokens and then it's gonna give us a nice little uh, HTML form that lets us add a new URI or basically vote to add a new URI. And then it's, if all the members of the DAO like that, then uh, it will go through. Let's see if that's all the changes we need. I think that's all the changes we need. Uh, let's see what we have over here. Okay, cool, so now we can, so we, let's see, who's the active member? This guy over here is the active member, so I'm just going to kind of shortcut to, instead of having a whole vote happen here, we want to add token, and I'm just gonna add in, so uh, see that URI there? That will be a uh, hippo collectible of mine, so I have these oil paintings that I use for collectibles. Uh, so it's a link, and then it's a price and a curve, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But since he's the only member and he votes this in, now we should have this token. There we go, there's the hippo. So, so now what has happened is a DAO of one person has voted in the ability to use this URI in a token. So uh, now we're on to the next step. Let's, 
bomb through this just to make sure I got it all. Yep, we added that. We've got our UI. So, so now I could, I could technically vote in the front end guy and they could vote, to, vote in the URI, but uh, just, to, just to get through things quicker. Okay, we are, we've got our DAO and we've got our NFT and we're voting in a URI. So now we wanna work on this thin layer of DeFi which is decentralized finance, probably more famous f like Compound and Maker where they have stable coins or you can, you can uh, lock up your stable coin or lend it to someone else and it's all kind of a circle right now, speculation, but, but we're gonna do some DeFi because we're gonna build a bonding curve into our token. So in the smart contract, we are gonna add a couple more functions. Uh, it looks like that. But what we're gonna do, let's just pull it up over here. Boop. And let's put it right up here, I think. Okay, so we are gonna have a total token count and that's gonna be used just for unique IDs. Uh, then we'll have a token count that represents the string. So anytime you see the string, that's basically gonna be that URI. And then uh, anybody can buy a token and anybody can sell a token. So when you buy a token, first of all, we're gonna make sure that that token is legal, that the DAO has voted it in. Uh, then what we're gonna do is make sure you sent in, so message.value is basically value that comes along with the transaction. So someone's actually paid for this, they put money into it. And they have to put in the exact token price or we're gonna fail at that point. If they've done all that, we're gonna go ahead and mint them a token to the address that signed the transaction. And we are going to set the token URI so then that metadata is tracked. And we'll increment our token count. And then this is the interesting part. So our token count will go up for this specific URI and our price will actually increase based on the curve. So no, normally with the bonding curve, there's like calculus involved, but since we we're just buying these discrete one at a time items, we can kind of adjust the price just one at a time. Also, you probably wanna have a numerator denominator here so you can basically have the thing curve up. This is gonna be a linear curve, so it's just a line, it's not a curve. So I, I guess I'm inventing bonding lines. Yeah. So, so you can buy and sell these tokens on bonding lines and you can sell the token back and you can see that the price is gonna go back down again. So let's jump into the UI, right? Hopefully this will Clevis test full for us. Wait, did I save it? Boom, okay, so that should compile, deploy, inject it into the front end. Let's dive back, oh, uh oh. I can't, I can't read the error. Let's see. Oh, this is the part, okay. So this is the gotcha. I, I, I'm gonna have to write this everywhere. The, the token standard that Open Zeppelin has set up, I'm gonna actually steal this so I can see it over here for a second. The token standard that Open Zeppelin has set up, um, the token URI function, so to get the string that is the URI for the token is an external function, and they do that to save a little bit of gas, but we need to read that from a smart contract, so we're gonna get in and change their contract. And anybody who ever pulls this down from the repo and tries to build this will have to get in and do this exact thing, so normally I would probably pull that contract out and put it into my repo as kind of like a fork of their contract but I'm gonna dive into, so I'm gonna get into the node modules, I'm gonna get into the tokens, I'm gonna get into the metadata, and I'll put it back on screen just to show the change. Okay, so here we are. We've got their metadata token and they've got it set to external, which means you can only read it off chain, which saves gas because of the way you can compile it, but we don't want that, we wanna read it on chain, so I'm just gonna hit save there and hopefully that will compile. Okay, I'm gonna assume that it will. Let's jump to the front end now. Yes, okay. How are we doing on time? Ooh, we 15 minutes. Okay, so back into our app. We're gonna to go to our polling function again. That is just totally crushing our local blockchain because of bad programming. And let's see, right about here, we're gonna paste in the stuff to 
gets the total token count, so it's going to query so we know how many total tokens there are. Then we're going to go through every single token and read their URI and owner. <laughs> and we'll have that information in our state, so then we can display that. And it looks like we're keeping track of my tokens. I don't think I want that quite yet. Uh, maybe I do. Maybe I do. Let's leave it. Okay, and then one other change we have to make is down here where we're getting the price and the curve, there is now a count. And then uh, we'll set the state. So we have all that. Okay, so now we, we, we're basically keeping track of all tokens that are actually minted so, so when I have tokens here, those are like possible tokens. Those are more like token URIs. I shouldn't have named that tokens. I should have named it token URIs because it's basically like legal strings. Now, all tokens is actually all the tokens, and we're querying the blockchain for all of them. And then my tokens is as we're querying those, we're checking to see if I'm equal to the owner there, and we're saving those special so we can display them special. Okay, now down to where we iterate through the tokens here. We want to do one extra thing right in here. We want to search for my token, and this is going to be used for the buy-sell function, just so when, when you buy it, you just give it money and you say, I want to buy it with this, this URI, but when you sell it, you have to say, I want to sell like number six, and you hand that over. Oh man, four minutes. I have to go to 10.50, not 11, huh? Ooh. Okay, so let's see, where are we at? One. Okay, down to our front end, we wanna display this stuff now. So we wanna display the token count. Uh, let's see, and we want to, we wanna know what my tokens are and we wanna have those prepared too. Oh, I see. So we want to, I think it's just going to go right here. Oh, man, if something, if something doesn't, oh, no, that's not going to work. 189. Oh, I think we replaced stuff. Let me undo that. Kind of got to get this exactly right on the first try. Okay, yeah, yeah, so we want to replace, yes, I see what we're doing here. Where we had that token price and token, Okay, it's up here. No, it's not. Lame. Okay, even better, I'm just going to copy and paste the front end. Let's go quicker. Going to bring the whole thing in. We'll explain it uh, as we get it. I got two minutes left. Select all, delete. Paste, save. <laughs> okay, now we should have, okay, we can bring in a URI. We have deployed with this guy. So what I'm gonna do is set this guy as our one and only DAO, and we're just gonna vote with one guy just in the sake of time. So let's add him into our DAO, add, oh, whoops. So we're going to add a member. Let's get to, there we go. Kill that off. Bring that in. It's probably the same one. Okay, so now we have two members. We can see that there. I want to exit out of the DAO with this guy. 
So now he is out. Uh, right? Oh. Okay, it's not letting us exit. Let's let's just grab. Oh, I bet I didn't deploy the. Let's just deploy in the last minute. Let's just deploy the last contracts. Uh, and do the full exit and just do the demo with what we have here. So, our finishing contract will look like this. It's basically, I, I just added one thing so he can exit out of the DAO. And then we can just have the one front end guy Ooh, seal this stuff up. And we'll do a Clevis test full. We'll get that compiled and deployed to the front end. At the same time, I'll go grab the latest front end so we have it, so I can do a quick demo. I wrote this during my son's nap, so it's more like a three hour build that we're compressing into 40 minutes. But the point is being able to rapidly go between your front end and your back end and set your contracts up as you go with your front end. So I'm going to go a little bit over time. OK, now we should have everything set up over here. OK, let's go back over here. We, uh, we want to vote in this guy. So I think it's going to be stored in my Levis contract add member. It's probably, oh, that's not even the right dude. Oh, I just added a guy that I don't have, I bet. Is that this guy? Yeah, it's that guy. Okay, we're good. Okay, so he is the only member of the, or there's two members of the DAO. This guy's gonna exit, making the DAO basically one dude, and so it doesn't really, but imagine that there are two or three people voting on this. Exit. There we go. There we go. OK, so he's exited out. Imagine we have multiple people. They're voting on this. They want to add in a uh, new token. Uh, grab that from my notes here. So we'll bring in, we already brought in the hippo. I'll bring in the fish this time. And these are just URLs. So oh, where's my front end? Okay, so we want to bring in the fish. We're gonna charge 0.25 ETH for it, and we're gonna or die, or I have it as dollar signs for die, and then 0, 0.0, let's have it go up maybe two cents with each purchase, and we'll add the token, and since we're the only member, it should uh, just add that in. There we go, so there is our token. Now it's available to buy. Now once, once the DAO votes in the fact that this token is available, Anybody can come along. And how much money do I have? We can watch my money up there in the top right. I can't really see it, but I'm assume. So we're just going to buy one of those tokens. So now that token has been minted to us. We could go to OpenSea. We could go to some of those third-party ERC721 sites. Uh, we'll see it show up down here. I've got zero. I've got one. So you can also see that the price is going up too, right? So you can imagine some kind of market is, is buying in and out of these things as they need them for something. And uh, so, so if I buy in early and a bunch of other people buy in and then I, I sell those tokens, I will uh, earn a profit. So we had a DAO, we brought in members, we voted in a token URL, we minted those tokens, and then we allowed the population to basically buy on a bonding line. All right, that's it. Thank you, guys. All of this will be available on my Twitter. I'm at Austin Griffith, and I will have like a better walkthrough and stuff if you'd like to look at it uh, line by line. I'm at Austin Griffith, so that's me. Okay, thank you.